Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Eleven bells. Those eleven bells symbolize an event that took place 101 years ago. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 1918, the armistice that ended the fighting of World War I, otherwise known as the Great War or the War to End All Wars, came into force. A year later, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed November 11th a national holiday named Armistice Day. On May 26, 1954, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill into law changing the name to Veterans Day in celebration of all, Americans of, of, all veterans of American wars. Different from Armed Forces Day, a day for citizen to citizens to come together and thank our military members who are currently serving, and unlike Memorial Day, a day for remembering those service members who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, Veterans Day pays tribute to all of those who have served their nation in, in the past as a member of the U.S. Armed Forces during times of peace or conflict. Our veterans are a humble bunch. Talk about them in their time in the service, and they are much more likely to mention old friends, their old buddies who are injured, or those who lost their lives, rather than discuss their own individual accomplishments. Those of us who lived have to represent those who did not make it. These words express a feeling that is common to Americans who have worn the uniform. They never forget their friends, especially with the ones who did not live to be called veterans. Nor do our veterans ever seem to lose the desire to serve their country. Anywhere you go in America, you find that veterans are the backbone of their communities, always making a contribution, pitching in, and providing leadership and setting a good example for the young. Roughly 20 million, less than 10% of our fellow citizens are veterans. Many of the veterans with us here today served in the cold mountains of Afghanistan or the burning heat of Iraq. Others go back to the Persian Gulf War, the Cold War period, the Vietnam War, or even the Korean War. And we are also honored to have with us some members of the largest American force ever assembled, those who served during World War II. Each has his or, own, his or her own story to tell, but whether duty found them home or abroad, in wartime or in peacetime, they all share the pride of having served. And they have in common the memory of taking an oath and becoming something much larger than themselves. Gathered as we are today in a time of war, we are only more sharply, sharply aware of the nation's debt to the members of the armed forces. Current members of the active duty force reserves and National Guard make up less than 1% of our total population. Many have deployed to multiple, multiple combat zones numerous times. As, as with other wars, many of our veterans suffer from physical ear injuries and from post-traumatic stress disorder. They are constantly in our thoughts. Our gratitude also extends to our veterans' loved ones because military service is often a family commitment and they too sacrifice for the good of the whole nation. Good morning, I'm Cadet Captain Kayla Blaha and I am the Commanding Officer of the J.R. Tucker Marine Corps Junior ROTC Program. I count it a true honor to be with all of you for this ceremony of recogni recognition and gratitude. And to all the veterans here today, on behalf of the entire Tucker family, I offer the greatest respect and the most heartfelt thanks. You keep faith with America. Your example of service and sacrifice inspires a new generation. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem and the retirement of the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Prior to this assembly, the JRTC program hosted a reception in the library for our veterans. We would like to recognize those who joined us at the reception and those who are with us now, seated in both the front, middle rows, and those in the rear of the auditorium. We are truly honored to be here with you today. During their time of military service, these veterans never sought fame, fortune, honor, glory, or any special recognition, but they deserve it. Veterans, when your name is called, if able, please stand to be recognized. If we inadvertently misrecognizing you by name, we will ask you to stand after all the names are called from your service branch. Thank you. The first group of veterans we will introduce today are from the United States Army. The U.S. Army veterans are Operation Iraqi Freedom Veteran, Mr. Chris Andrews. <laughs> Vietnam War Veteran, Mr. Frank Brown. <laughs> Mr. Russell Brown. Mr. Bill Bryant. <laughs> J.R. Tucker's Mr. Kevin Mabel. <laughs> Mr. Brian Now. <laughs> Ms. Wanda O'Mealy. Desert Storm veteran, Miss Michelle Pennison. Oper Operation Iraqi Freedom veteran, Mrs. Liz Ramos. <laughs> Vietnam War veteran, J.R. Tucker's Mr. Bill Stanley. Vietnam War veteran, Mr. James Stokes. <laughs> Mr. Tyrone Wall. <laughs> Korean War veteran, Mr. Frank Wolf. <laughs> Will all other U.S. Army veterans who we failed to recognize please stand? Thank you. Please be seated. Our next group of veterans served in the United States Marine Corps. Mr. Ray Clatworthy. <laughs> J.R. Tucker's Miss Kathy Brock. <laughs> Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom Veteran, J.R. Tucker's Sergeant Major Scott Colley. Operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom Veteran and Tucker alum, Mr. Josh Clark. <laughs> Mr. Donald Nydig. <laughs> and Operation Iraqi Freedom Veteran, J.R. Tucker's Lieutenant Colonel Brent Reifer. Representatives from the Richmond Marine Corps League, Mr. Jerry Howard. And Mr. Stan Williams. Will all other U.S. Marine Corps veterans who we failed to recognize please stand? Thank you. The following, the following individuals served in the United States Navy. Operation Enduring Freedom Veteran, Ms. Christina Conser. <laughs> Ms. 
World War II veteran, Mr. William Fortner. <laughs> Beirut veteran, Mr. R.J. Johnson. Mr. Joshua Knuckles. <laughs> J.R. Tucker's Mr. Robert Patterson. <laughs> and J.R. Tucker's Mr. Scott Seal. Representative from the Richmond Navy League, Ms. Joy Mullins. <laughs> Will all other U.S. Navy veterans who we fail to recognize please stand? <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. Veterans from the U.S. Air Force. Today's guest speaker, Captain Mark Banks. J.R. Tucker's Mr. Jim Dow. <laughs> Korean War veteran Mr. Bob Gillespie. <laughs> J.R. Tucker's Mr. Ba Mr. Basil Jordatus. Mr. Joel Keith. Mr. Franklin Moore. Vietnam veteran Mr. James Welton Smith. Will all other U.S. Air Force or Ar Army Air Corps veterans who we fail to recognize please stand? Thank you. Members of the Army National Guard, Mr. Jack Alamonti, and Mr. Lenny Cake. If there are any other Army National Guard veterans who we fail to recognize, please stand. Thank you. If there are any members of the Air National Guard with us today, please stand. If there are any members of the U.S. Coast Guard, please stand to be recognized. At this point, would all veterans who are with us please stand together? Thank you. Please be seated. Additionally, we would be remiss if we did not recognize one other group of individuals who have given a great deal in service to their nation. These people are seldom recognized, but their sacrifices are very real and tangible. Please join me in recognizing the family members of our veterans who have displayed marvelous support, abiding resolve, and steadfast patience. Please give them a round of applause. Today's guest speaker, Captain Mark Banks, embodies what we mentioned earlier, a veteran who continues to serve in their community. 
Captain Banks enlisted in the United States Air Force in July of 1986 as a security specialist, also known as a military police officer. He served from July 1986 to July 1996 on active duty. While on active duty, he was assigned to Holland, Iceland, Germany, Italy, and Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. He entered the Air Force Reserves in August 1996 and retired as a Chief Master Sergeant in August 2015 at the 512th Security Forces Squadron, Dover Air Force Base, Delaware. Captain Bakes joined the Henrico County Police Division in July 1996 and is the School Services Commanding Officer. Okay, I would be remiss if I didn't say, Captain Blaha, you're doing an amazing job. Keep I would also be remiss if I didn't thank all the men and women who have served uh, this great nation of ours. So one more time, round of applause for all the men and women who served. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Uh, I would take this microphone off, but the Colonel told me that it's a little uh, sensitive, so I won't move it because I'll embarrass myself. Um, so this is geared towards the young ladies and gentlemen that are thinking about what you're going to do in life. Uh, and understand, it doesn't have to be the military, okay? The military is a great thing. I loved it. It took care of me. I come from a family full of Marines. It's crazy in my household. I'm the only airman there. I'm probably the one that stays the most calm. Uh, but I love my brothers and my dad. Uh, service for self uh, is what we embody. In the Air Force, our core values, service for self, excellence in all we do, it's better or greater than any man or woman alone. To join the United States military is a huge honor. I feel I can speak on, on behalf of the men and women who have served. We never do anything for recognition. We don't do what we do for ribbons. We don't do what we do for recognition. We don't do what we do for certificates. We do what we do for our fellow man, our fellow woman. Uh, I would do it again in a heartbeat. 29 years I've served. I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, I would do it again. I, I wouldn't hesitate. My dad thinks he can still serve. He's 81, three-time Vietnam vet. He thinks he still can serve. Uh, but again, back to the men and women, uh, young men and women, who are thinking about what am I going to do? I have no idea. Time is passing so fast. I'm only 15, 16, 17, whatever the case may be. Here's what I, if I can give you anything, I want to give you this. Service. Service is uh, classified or described as the action of helping or doing work for someone. Regardless of what you do, where you go, or how you do it, ensure that you do a couple of things. One, never chase money. Money is not the end and root all of everything. I think people, some people think that. It's not. When you do what you love, somehow, some way, the money will come. Second, do something that is bigger than you. Do something that you feel committed in doing. Do something that you're compassionate, very compassionate about. Do something that you're committed uh, to help others. And everything else will come. Again, it does not have to be the service. It could be some type of career doing HVAC. Electric you can be an electrician. You can be a teacher. Teachers are some of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. Uh, they do a lot for so little. And I want to thank you for the teachers that do that every day. You can be a policeman. That is also something that it takes a lot of commitment to do. Uh, no one ever joined a police department to become rich. <laughs> you never do that. But it's something bigger than yourself. When you feel you want to commit yourself to your citizens, uh, it's, it's, it's much bigger than you. My challenge to you is this. Whatever you decide to do, wherever you decide to go, diversify your surroundings. And what do I mean by that? I mean, when you go out into the world, when you start doing what you think you want to do, go up to a man or woman who looks nothing like you. Go up to a man or woman who doesn't uh, go to the same church as you do. Go up to a man or woman who wears different things than you do and say hi. 
because I guarantee you, to every military member in this, in this audience, you know someone who looks nothing like you. You know someone who didn't come from where you came from, but your brothers and sisters to this day. Some of my best friends look nothing like me, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we need more of that today. Don't just go with people who look like you. Go with people who don't. Because I guarantee you, what you'll find out very quickly, like I did, is we all the same. We want the same things. We're committed to the same things. We want homes that are safe and secure. We want to make sure our kids are raised in an environment that is free of crime. We want to ensure that our kids can run through the street without worrying about uh, being shot at and those other things. We want safety. We want security. The same thing as everyone else. So I ask of you to do that. Now, this is the audience involvement part. I'm going to raise my hand. You say service. service. Let's try that again. Service. One more time. Service. service is bigger than any man or woman in this room. I don't care what your title is. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you look like. Service is bigger than you. Commit yourself to something bigger than yourself, and I guarantee you, you'll reap the benefit and the rewards more so than anyone else. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for the recognition. God bless America. Captain Banks, J.R. Tucker High School would like to present you with a gift and appreciation for your time and remarks today. Thank you for your service to our country and its citizens. As America looks back on over more than two centuries of freedom, we see a common thread woven throughout history. The dedication of men and women who answered the call of freedom and served in our nation's armed forces. As the service songs are played in medley, we would, like, we would appreciate if those veterans and family members who served in the respective branch of service would please stand.
Today there is, and perhaps there always will be, conflict in the world. Peace and freedom are values that we cherish. Those who have paid the ultimate price, stranger or loved one, will never be forgotten. Many veterans are not here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of taps in memory and honor of those who have given their lives for our country.